this this postseason is going to be different for you, getting the chance to be on the field and, and contribute and make an impact. What what was it like last year um, when you appeared in your last game against Michigan and had to watch the, the Big Ten title game and, and watch the playoff and not being able to be a part of that? What was that like? Yeah. Um, I mean, to put it frank, it just sucked, you know, uh, having to sit back and watch my team uh, do everything that I wanted to do. But honestly, I mean, I was uh, – I did everything that I could, you know, being a leader, speaking up, trying to coach the young guys up out there and just help out the best way I could. And uh, that 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 made me happy, especially when they went out there and won. So, you know, I was happy regardless. And how, how do you feel about your decision to come back um, in the hindsight? Obviously, you, you, you thought you were coming back to play a full game t- – 12 game, 13, 14 game slate, and it hasn't worked out that way. But I imagine you've had a, a full year development as well. Just looking back on it, how do you, how do you feel about everything that's transpired? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, this uh, year hasn't gone the way I thought it would. I don't think it's gone the way anybody thought it was. You know, uh, it's been kind of a, it's been a crazy year. Games canceled left and, war- left and right. Uh, everybody with this whole COVID situation. Um, honestly, even with all that, I just feel blessed that I even got the opportunity to come back and play, you know, even if it was for either 12 games or five games, which it ended up being, um, I feel blessed. And I'm just happy that I got to uh, go out there and play with my brothers at all, you know, because nothing's, nothing's uh, guaranteed for us. So, you know, even with the way that it went, I'm just, I'm blessed that it went this way. I'm, with that, I'm blessed that I had an opportunity to do uh, go out there and play. All right, we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Jonathan, knowing what the, the Michigan game means to you, what was it What was it like to get the news? How long does it take to like fully move on to Northwestern from that? Yeah, um, I mean, it was hard because obviously not only do I like – I really wanted to play in that game, but it was senior day and probably my last time playing in the shoe. Um, so it sucked that it got canceled and it hurt. But, um, you know, now we're playing for rings and um, you got to kind of put that away and focus put all your efforts towards uh, Northwestern. And that's what I've been doing. So I know that game is gone. There's nothing I can do about it on the Northwestern, you know. All righty, we'll go next to Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Coop, along those lines, I mean, it's almost like it just took two years to play one senior season for you. I mean, you got to play the rivalry game last year. Now you'll get the postseason. Has that has that eased any of this frustration about missed games for you? That's just, I don't know, it just took you longer to get through that one year that everybody else got. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when I look back on it, two years, uh, two years to play one full senior season. Um, yeah, I mean, it eases the stress a little bit. Um, I, I Like I said earlier, I'm just happy that I even got a chance to do any of that, you know, with uh, go out there and just play with my brothers. I love this team. I, I'm, like, sitting out and not and watching your team play really hurt and really sucks. Uh, so the fact that I, I got a chance to do any, any of that and just go out there and be the leader that I wanted to be and, uh, do what I want to do with my guys. Like, I, I'm happy. I know it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but at the end of the day, like, I'm happy and I'm ready to uh, go on and do more things with my team. Thanks, Coop. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 uh, – yeah, 11 Warriors. Hey, Jonathan, like, obviously, you know, you didn't get to have your senior day on Saturday. Was there anything that you did to kind of, you know, commemorate what would have been your senior day? Uh, What did I do? was uh we had practice um so I was good and then uh I think I went home and I turned on <laughs> turned on some football uh I mean I called my parents and uh, they say happy senior day and all that stuff uh no I didn't do much I mean I just kind of just chilled and played the game watched film on Northwestern you know it, it is what it is man I just nothing really surprises us I think Justin said earlier like you know, in the beginning, it was everything was like a surprise, but now it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, of course that would happen. <laughs> Does it give you even more motivation going into these last couple games? But like, I didn't get to have these games, but at least I still get these. Yeah, definitely. Uh, 
I just, you know, you have a different type of appreciation and like work towards games and stuff when you know that it's not guaranteed. Um, and, you know, only playing in five games, I feel like I, I can still show more of a player that I am. Um, and I plan to do that with these next couple of games that I have, but you know, nothing's, nothing's guaranteed and you can't take a second for granted. So, you know, I'm just, I'm on, I'm, I'm on a mission. Thanks, John. Thank you. Ready. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Jonathan, more of a kind of a playoff question. You guys were sitting in pretty good position that if you won this Saturday, you'd be in good shape for the playoff, but the uh, LSU upset <laughs> solidified it. Did you watch that game? Yeah, I, wa I watched some of it. I watched some parts. And the shooting, the sh the shoe. Yeah, that was a uh, that was something, wasn't it? The, sh the, the when he threw the shoe. Yeah, I mean, how good do you feel clean. about your, your position now? Take care of business, and we're in. Uh, that's that's been the whole goal, you know. That's even before that game. That's what Coach Dave's been saying to us. You know, our whole focus is take care of uh, Northwestern, take care of this Big Ten championship, and you know. And then we'll see what happens from there. You know, it'll take care of itself. Um, that, that I don't think I don't think that game changed anything for us players. Just I think it just knows that we still know as a group that we have to go out there and take care of business no matter what. Thanks, Jonathan. All righty. Next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hey, Jonathan, um, how are you kind of figuring the, the balance right now between um, being rested late in the season and then being rusty, having only played two times in the last five weeks? And, and how is are, are there benefits to, to not playing as much down the stretch? Or are you worried that the, the, these lack of reps, you, this team is not going to be in the kind of rhythm it wants for the, the postseason? Um, yeah, I think that's a really hard thing to balance um, with the fact that it is so late but we've only played five games and we've also been practicing a lot. And there's like, there's a difference between a practice rep and a game rep. Um, but I feel like our team understands that. And that's why whenever we do have practices, we take it seriously to try to make it like a game rep so that we have those reps. So we're not um, losing our edge or losing our, our rhythm when we go into games. Um, so, yeah, I just feel like we, uh, even though, we're not playing as much as we thought to to get in like a nice rhythm, our practices and how hard we go in practice kind of make up for it. So I guess what, what does, as a player, what does you taking a practice rep as a game rep mean to you? Uh, it means, you know, cause I feel like there's always like, there's different things between like a game and practice and, a, and in practice you can mess up or not really understand a call. And, it, and there's not consequences for it right now. You can always learn. And in the game, the, those consequences come back and they hurt you and they can cause you to lose. So when you're in practice, you can't think of like, oh, I could just practice. And uh, if I miss this gap or if I miss this tackle, then like it's just practice, it'll be fine. You have to kind of take it as seriously. And that's where uh, leaders and accountability from our players come in and try to make sure that whenever we're practicing or going, uh, full speed, you know, you can't look at it as, oh, like, I missed this. We'll get it next time. Thanks. All righty, we'll go next to Whitney Harding from WCMH. Hey, Jonathan. I asked Justin a similar question, and you've talked about it. you just got to focus on winning this next game and playoff will take care of itself. But with all this conversation going on, people's wonderful opinions of they'll only play six games, nah, 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 nah. I mean, is that even more motivation? And is it hard to not respond to that kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, I do feel like it's more motivation for the team just because we do pay attention and we do hear what everybody's saying about us. Um, as far as responding goes, you know, I feel like everybody, people like to talk, you know, and talking is like a big thing and or tweeting and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like as a team, we like to just go out there and just prove um, that we're one of the best teams in the country. Uh, and so that's, like, like Justin said, that's our whole focus is beating Northwestern and proving that we are one of those teams. You said you watched, started some scouting. I mean, they rushed for over 400 yards this week. What did you see from them in that performance? Um, and did, did they do anything a little bit different than what you may have seen this year? Uh, 
I think they got a they got a new uh, offensive coordinator from uh, last year this year. So, you know, you can't really too rely too much on the last film. But uh, I think they're a very very good team. Obviously, they're in the Big Ten championship for a reason. Um, they've been doing really well on the west side of the Big Ten, and um, you know, in order to give a team that respect, you have to go out there and work hard and uh, and scout them well. Um, you know, I think that I think they're a really good team. Actually, um, I think we have to go out there and play and uh, play really well. That's uh, you know, that's uh, that's that's my that's my diagnosis that I can say to you guys. Thanks so much. All righty, we'll go next to Peter Warren from the Daily Northwestern. Hey, Jonathan. Going off that, are there any players that have stuck out to you uh, from Northwestern's tape that you think could be a key player to you guys to really hone in on for this game? Uh, I like their running back. Uh, I really, and I know that their uh, their quarterback is from Indiana that we played against, um, and he's good. He's good with his feet. He has a decent, he's a pretty good ball, um, and uh, as a defensive line standpoint, we like to study their offensive line. Um, you know, we got a couple guys returning on offensive line. They have a true freshman who's pretty good uh, uh, left tackle. So uh, you just got to take them seriously, you know, and I feel like as, as long as we uh, take care of everything on our end, uh, things will work out. All right, we'll go next to Patrick Murphy, 247. Jonathan, you've talked about the last year plus and, and getting a chance to play in this game, but winning this game, lifting that trophy at the end, what would that mean to you given everything that's gone on here for the last two seasons for you? Uh, I mean, it'll mean a lot, you know. Um, probably can't put it into words or really think about it too much until I'm at that point. Um, but that's where like all the hard work goes into, you know, and that's why you can't, you got to keep working and got to keep watching film and having practices because, you know, when, when that does happen, um, it'll all be worth it. You know, all the sacrifices, all the uh, time spent. Um, and with this crazy year um, and everything that I've been through personally, honestly, um, you know, it'll be worth it. So that's what, that's what, all, that's what all the hard work is for. All right, we got time for two more questions. Uh, we'll go to Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Hey, Coop, when you committed here at a high school, was was it always your goal to be a captain? Uh, I would say yeah. Um, I pride myself as being a leader. Um, you know, I wanted my teammates to have that respect and look at me in that way. And uh, yeah, I, I would feel like it was definitely one of my goals to be a captain of Ohio State. So does that start kind of start during the recruiting process when maybe after you've committed and you're trying to convince others to come join you that I guess taking that initiative as a leader? Yeah. Um, like you said, like trying to get other people to come to Ohio State. Like do you start showing some of those leadership qualities back when you're still just a recruit who's already committed here? Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like because as a leader, you don't just like turn that on and off. I feel like you're just that through and through. Um, and you just do that with how you work, how you talk to people, how you act in your character. And uh, I feel like that's just, that's just in me. So when it came to me being a recruit, I feel like I was always uh, a leader. Thanks. All right, and last question to Tim May from Letterman Row. Tim? Yeah, two quickies. Uh, Jonathan, number one, during, you know, as he's, blows have come at you guys and you know this taken away that taken away especially since you guys named captains etc if you captains uh do y'all meet before you kind of get in front of your teammates so you have a, a a straight message you know a conforming message you want to get across and just how have y'all like as a group of captains handled that yeah um i feel like well we have our conversations uh separate like we talk about the team and how we're all doing, how we're feeling uh, between ourselves. And normally we're we're pretty much all on the same page because, I mean, that's the point of being a captain. Um, uh, and we just try to relate the message to our team. You know, we get it that things are hard. Things are really, really hard. Things are tough. Long season, uh, things are not going our way. Games getting canceled. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And it's hard on anybody throughout the country. Um, you just kind of have to as captains, it can't just be one person's voice leading. It's got to be like 
come from everybody. And that's what we try to do, just keep our team going and keep and real and let them know that it's all gonna be worth it at the end of the day if we just keep going. And with that in mind, why is why is Ohio State playing for a fourth straight Big Ten championship this coming week? If you had to put your finger on it, what is it about this pro besides the talent, obviously, and y'all's good look. Mm -hmm. Uh well, if you had to put your finger on on what what it is that drives this program more than anything else, what would you say? Uh, if I could put it down in one word, uh, that would be the brotherhood. Um, that's just like it's 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 hard to describe unless you're in it. And obviously, a lot of players throughout the years, from J.T. Barry, Rayquan McMillan to Terry McLaurin to Paris Campbell. I mean. All these guys throughout the years have talked about the brotherhood, and it's real. You know, we do this for each other. We don't do it just for ourselves or personal accolades. And when you actually – when you go out there and play for the guy next to you and not for yourself, you know, you play harder and you play better. And uh, I feel like that's the reason why Ohio State has had uh, the success that it has the past four years is because uh, the brotherhood. Thanks, man. Thank you. All righty, Coop. Thank you.